So here we go. Uh, our next project we're going to work on is um, a little bit of a coil pot extension on that, literally extending it a little bit farther than we have before on those. Um, part of the difficulty and the challenge is making things a little bit bigger. And so this assignment will be to make a, a 10 inch pinch pot. Okay, 10 inches tall is what we're looking for on that one. Um, so let me show you some examples. Ah, get the cross section here ready to go. And so here's an, here's an example. Here's my example number one. Uh, this was about 10 inches before it was fired. And it's pretty simple in its construction. Notice the coils are showing on the outside. You have the option of having the coils show um, as part of the design technique. Or you may decide to have the coils um, blended in as part of your design technique. It doesn't matter which one you do. Okay, It can be either of them. Um, it, it's completely up to you on what's going on. Um, the goal, 10 inches tall. Um, it probably has to have at least, it needs to have at least one curve in it. Okay, where, and that's where it kind of goes out a little bit and comes in, or it may come the other way. It may, may, may be outside and then come in. Most of the examples I have have more of an outside curve on them on, on the edge there uh, that we're looking for. So that's a, another requirement, at least one curve on it as you decide to put it together. It's probably going to need a, a little bit of a gentle curve too. Um, things that are, are really dramatic or a little bit difficult. Uh, let's go to this guy right here. This one has a lot of dramatic curves in it. Um, it still worked out on that one, but you'll notice it goes this way, then it goes this way, then it goes this way, back and forth and back and forth on that, which is kind of cool on those, but it is a little bit more difficult uh, on those. So sometimes the gentle curve is a little bit easier on those. Note that it is blended on the outside, it's blended on the inside um, for, for its structure, and then it's 10 inches tall. Other things you're going to notice on some of these, let me show you another example uh, first. The outside, or the, if you're having the coil show, it does not necessarily have to be just coils on those. Um, it could be some areas they smooth this area out and then pressed in some designs here. This one just had that ziggy zaggy pattern of the coils on it. This one seems like a larger coil of clay and that had some textured things in, little curly cues. Anyway, you get the idea that um, the type of coil you have does not have to be a straight coil. Uh, when you make these constructions. This one is lacking uh, the curve on it uh, that we're looking for, um, but a pretty good idea as far as uh, assembling different sorts of outside texture uh, with this particular one. Uh, here's another one we have. Hey, stay still. Um, this one was slightly different. They started out with just little pieces on the bottom that just kind of loped over, and they just continued that with their, their design, um, and so that they have these different sections of the coils on there. Once again, coils visible on the outside, blended on the inside. It has the slight curve that we're looking for. It goes out a little bit. It doesn't come back in, but just going out, you know, you could make something not only here, but it could be something more here that's somewhat of, of a bowl shape that we're looking for on those as well. And so um, it's kind of up to you on what you want to have happen for this particular project. The construction is going to be the same techniques that we used on the, our initial ones. Remember we did our little uh, smaller coil projects that were about this big and um, we had the coils showing. We did one with the coils blended on the outside. Uh, the same exact construction technique on that one. I found that perhaps sometimes it is helpful to do something like this where you come up with a, uh, a design at least for your outside. Now this is uh, an 11 and a half inch um, paper. Where's the ruler here? Let's get our height that we want to go in here. So we need a 10 inch project and so that's going to be about this tall. And that's 10 inches before it's um, before it's fired on those. Oops, I got a little off on that one. Sorry. Okay, come on back here. Okay, so this is going to be my, my max height on this one is going to be about this tall. And so I can create a template or a guide that I can use to set uh, beside it. So let's say that I wanted the side um, on this one to be something, say I wanted it to go like this with a gentle curve like that and maybe something like that. You know, and so that's the side view. If I was to create the rest of it here, maybe, maybe something like that and something like that. Okay, and so then that would be my, my design or whatever. I ran out of room here because I didn't really need it. I just needed the one side. And so then I can take the, my paper 
and then use this this design that I have for the shape, the basic shape of my project, and I can cut it out. And so when I build it, and then just lop off this top here. So this is my template. This is this is my guide. So when I'm building my project, I can take and I can build a couple of coils on there, you know, build a couple of coils off here. And then I can just take this piece and I can put it to the side to see if it's going out far enough as a guide. And then you put a couple more coils on and make sure that you're shaping it and just use this as a comparison from time to time so you can make sure you're kind of on the track that you want to be. Um, I do have paper up here that you can utilize for that. And so then that would be the, the total height that we're looking for. Um, uh, as far as uh, joining the clay together, that's the same technique as what we have on, on the other. So I don't think I need to do a, um, a full um, a demonstration on how to blend coils together because you guys should already know that from the other uh, demos that we have. I may put in uh, a, a video on the assignment that we can see that you can kind of see it developing and growing. Uh, maybe some, maybe even just some still photos as it takes some time to do it. Now this is not designed to be a one day project. Um, I expect it'll probably take you a couple of days um, as you as you go through this process. Now, uh, in, because of that, as you build and as you construct on your project, you build, let's say you build up to here or something like that on the first day. What I'd want you to do is to um, make sure you're keeping your piece wrapped in plastic. Uh, for the duration of that time. Now you could set it on a board or something like that so it's easier to carry, um, but you'll want to put a damp paper towel over the rim um, from day to day at the end of the day so it keeps at least the rim portion where you're going to be adding more and more coils on so it keeps that um, ready to go. It keeps it so it's fresh and moist and that sort of a thing. But like I said, I'll probably give a little bit of a demo on, on my own on, on making a, a coil pot for these uh, this particular construction. Um, but uh, I think that's probably enough to get you guys started on your next assignment uh, for, your, uh, for the large coil pot. Large coil pot, one curve. Oh, diameter. Uh, we want needs to go at least three to four inches wide. That's mostly so you can do this. So you can stick your hand inside and you can mold it and shape it a little bit. If it's narrow, narrow, narrow on, on those, then it's not going to work for you. You can't even get inside to blend it. So it needs to be wide enough so you can work inside of it and blend the inside. So that's why I'm thinking three to four inches uh, wide. This one is, is four right here uh, with that. So that's probably a good, a good starting base size. The base on this one was three to start out with uh, on those. And then the, the mouth ended up with the four. And then in the middle here, it went out to, uh, looks like about six, about six inches wide. Uh, now maybe five and a half to six inches wide in the middle sections. So you need, you need enough of, of, of a volume out there. This one was on the bottom. It looks like we were about three inches on the bottom and then the width of this one came out to be about five uh, on those uh, as we started out. So that's probably a good thing to start out maybe maybe three to four inch base on that one and then building it out remember going at maybe five inches wide, six inches wide in your construction at some point in time. Then be able to bring it back in a little bit uh, on, on however much you deem on those ones. And that should make a pretty cool project for you uh, on those. And that's it.